What is up Karatix? In this video we'll be testing and reviewing the railgun that was finally added to purchase in GTA Online. Now for those of you who didn't know, this gun cannot be purchased at the ammunition store normally or even in your agency currently or any special weapon place that you usually go to. You actually have to get it by visiting a daily gun van that spawns in different places around the map and in that van you can go ahead and buy it. Now I did make a short video explaining this, which I'll leave linked down below in the pinned comment, but that's the main gist of it there. Now the railgun costs between $500 and $700,000, depending on what discount is available to you when you buy it. And just to clarify here, this is the third and last weapon for the Drug Wars DLC. There are no more in the files. So once you acquire the railgun, you'll notice that in terms of upgrades, it only offers some skins, and that's pretty much it. But honestly, that sort of makes sense, and that was as to be expected, that we wouldn't see any crazy modifications for this weapon. But anyways, the railgun is located in the heavy weapons category of the weapon wheel. It holds up to 20 rounds. Its reload time is roughly about 2 seconds. However, you can skip this reload time if you use the trick where you quickly swap between one of the throwable weapons and then back to the railgun during reload. Many players have been using this quick reload trick for years for weapons like the RPG, musket, etc. So for those of you familiar with that, it's pretty much the same concept here. Now I do want to clarify here that the railgun cannot auto lock onto targets. It is a free aim heavy weapon. Now in terms of its max range, it's about 1600 feet or 500 meters. However, since you don't have a scope, it's very difficult to hit a target that's that far away. Plus, in terms of the speed of the round, it's about half the speed of a normal gun. Now, obviously, it's not as slow as a homing missile or RPG, but it is a lot slower than a rifle, which is something extra you definitely have to keep in mind when you're timing your shots to hit a moving target. Now, in terms of damage testing, we're going to be testing what it does to players vehicles, armored vehicles, jets, oppressor mark II, and more. Now, I do want to give a massive shout out and thank you to my friends Dornier, Alex, Jack, and February for helping me out with this testing. I could not have done it without them. But anyways, let's get started with our first test, which is a high level player with max stats and only full health. And here you can see it is only a one shot kill. However, if the player has full health and full armor, you can see here that it is a two shot kill. Now let's say they're using BST with full health and full armor. It is a three shot kill. And these are pretty much the same results we see with the explosive sniper rounds. However, when the player has no armor or BST, it is a two shot kill. Now let's move on to the vehicles and don't worry, I will show a chart with all the data including explosive sniper rounds and homing missile results to make it easier for you guys to compare. So firstly here we have a normal car with 100% armor, this represents any normal vehicle, a supercar, a muscle car, whatever that doesn't have any crazy Amani tech or um, special armor resistance. It's just a normal car with the 100% armor upgrade from LS Customs, and that is a one-shot kill. However, to mention here, if you shoot the glass or windshield of a vehicle instead of a body panel or the player in the car, it will not explode. The railgun round will go straight through the glass, and this applies for pretty much all vehicles and aircrafts, so keep that in mind. Next up we have a vehicle with Imani Tech, however we're going to be using the most armored Imani Tech vehicle currently in game, and that is the Omnis EGT. That one takes a ridiculous 27 railgun rounds for it to blow up, so that's pretty insane there. In terms of the explosive sniper rounds, it takes 30 of those to blow up the Omnis EGT.
and for the homing missiles, it takes 12 of them to blow up the Omni CGT. Continuing to the Night Shark, one of the more popular armored vehicles. This one takes 20 railgun shots to blow up, which happens to be the max amount of rounds you can hold at once for this gun. And for comparison here, the explosive sniper is 23 shots. And the homing missiles is 27 shots. Moving along to the Kanjali tank, this one takes 17 railgun shots to blow up, 20 explosive sniper shots, and only 8 homing missiles. Now let's move on to the aircrafts. Firstly here we have the Buzzard, and it is a one-shot kill with the Railgun. However, with the Explosive Sniper it actually takes three shots. And obviously a homing missile is one shot, everybody knows that. However, remember what I stated earlier about the glass? If you shoot the glass of the Buzzard and not the player inside or one of the body panels when using the Railgun, nothing will happen. So. Keep that in mind, always aim for the body panels. Continuing to a fully upgraded Akula, this helicopter tanks 6 railgun shots before it blows up, which is honestly pretty good. And then in terms of the explosive sniper shots, it's about 7 shots. And in terms of the homing missiles, it's 3 shots. Moving along to the jets, we have the laser. So this one blows up with only one railgun shot. So it's gonna be a lot easier to take out the jet griefers from now on because before with the explosive sniper, it would take two rounds. And by the time they were shot once, they would just bail out or teleport to their apartment and get another jet and it was pretty much done <laughs> from there. So now one shot kill with the laser with the railgun, very impressive. However, this brings us to the Hydra, which surprisingly tanks three railgun shots, which is pretty crazy. So this is probably going to be the new go-to jet for Jack Griefers from now on. However, I do want to mention that the first shot does cause significant damage to the Hydra, and most of the time, they'll actually lose one of their flaps, which makes it very difficult to fly. They will most likely lose control of the Hydra and crash, so at least with that one shot, they're going to have to most likely go get a new one or bail out or whatever, but at least with that one shot, you're able to get them away from you to stop bothering you. And to mention here as well, for those of you wondering, the Hydra does take four explosive sniper shots to blow up. And lastly, we have the infamous Oppressor Mark II. Now I do want to mention that the Oppressor Mark II is a very small and quick moving vehicle, which makes it extremely difficult and unlikely that you're actually going to hit an Oppressor Mark II that's trying to grief you. Again, the railgun does not have auto aim, so if you manage to get that really, really lucky shot, the Oppressor Mark II blows up with only one shot from the railgun, so pretty good there, but again, very unlikely that you're actually going to get that shot. And to clarify here, I'm not saying it's impossible, I'm just saying it's extremely difficult. I have seen it done before, but again, for the majority of people, it's, it's pretty difficult. And for those of you who didn't know, with the explosive sniper rounds, it takes two shots to take down the Oppressor Mark II. However, with the first shot, the player actually does fall off the Mark II. So honestly, I think the Sniper is a much better counter to the Mark II's 
because of its bullet velocity that's about five times faster as compared to the railgun. And as promised, here is all the data in a chart to make it easy to compare. Based on this data, the railgun is useful in many situations, especially with helicopters and jets, but in terms of PvP on foot, I think you're better off using other weapons since this weapon doesn't have auto-aim. For close range targets, you're either going to use a musket, an assault shotgun, or a shotgun with explosive rounds, which does have auto-aim and is a one-shot kill in most scenarios. And for mid-range targets, you're most likely going to be using rifles or MGs. And for those long-range shots, most of the time, the heavy sniper and the marksman are still your best choices. But again, this is just my opinion. Overall, I think the railgun is definitely worth acquiring to counter those jet griefers. And honestly, everybody was worried about it being overpowered. I personally think it's not. And the main reason for that is because they did not give it auto aim. That's what would have broke this weapon and made it completely unbalanced. But the fact that you have to manually aim at your targets and the bullet velocity isn't that quick, I think it's very well balanced in the current state of GTA Online. Anyways, guys, hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.